The NFL script writers had the San Francisco 49ers playing Road Warriors in these first two weeks of the 2023 regular season. After taking care of business against the Steelers and the Rams, the team returned to the Bay with a 2-0 record and in control of the NFC West. We'll talk more about the Week 2 win over LA and preview Thursday night's home opener with All-Pro Safety Talanoa Hufanga. We're back with a regular season installment of 49ers Live. I'm your host, Lindsay Polaris. It was a full red out at SoFi Stadium in week two. The sea of red jerseys was a familiar scene. The 49er faithful travel well on any given Sunday, and especially when it comes to their SoCal rivals. What you're not used to seeing, the traveling team in red jerseys. An eight game regular season win streak headed into the matchup can make enemy territory feel more like home. Road win number two was a gritty, grinded out kind of game. Christian McCaffrey led the rushing attack to keep San Francisco competitive in the first half, and it took a big time third quarter rally by the 49ers defense to shift the momentum in San Francisco's favor. LA came up with nothing in its first three drives of the second half. Cornerback Isaiah Oliver's third down stop forced the first Rams punt, and his interception on the next possession allowed San Francisco to pull ahead. A drive-ending sack by All-Pro linebacker Fred Warner completed the third-quarter trifecta. Brock Purdy, Debo Samuel, and company took care of things offensively to secure the 30-23 win and their ninth straight regular season dub over L.A. Now let's look back at this game from a different perspective with help from our 49ers sideline sounds. It's all about our football team, right? We got to dictate the terms of how this game is going to be played. All right, it's going to be hard, it's going to be physical, it's going to be violent. When it's over, leave no doubt who the best team on this field is. Boys, there's something great about this game of football. Like Flory said, leave no doubt. Tight up there, what that's all right. Aggressive, downhill, it's simple, man. Let's go do it. RB's on three. One, two, three. RB. Double down three, one, two, three. RB. Three, three, three. Three. Yeah, get in here, get in here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. 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 Let
on the road. Look at all the fans. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look at all of them. Took over so far. Go home with a dub. Say hey. <laughs> hey. Oh my God, it's a sea of red. The Niners had no time to enjoy the win with the home opener versus the New York Giants coming up on Thursday night. As we're recording this on Tuesday, the team is back in the building for their first walkthrough of the week. Listen in as head coach Kyle Shanahan previews the upcoming Giants 49ers matchup. You feel extremely rushed. Um, you know, I, I saw the players a few hours ago and it was the first time I saw them. I told them it was Wednesday morning and um, by... Our, the end of our first meeting, it was Thursday. It was kind of how we explained it. And tomorrow morning is Friday. Um, but by 10 o'clock, it's the day before the game. Um, so it's weird. Um, we, we're throwing four days into two days. What challenge does Daniel Jones present? Um, huge challenge. I mean, um, I mean, it starts with his legs. I mean, anytime you have that speed and you can run the ball like he does, they're willing to run him. Um, he's willing to run. He's physical when he runs and he's got the skill set to run away from people so anytime you got a quarterback like that um, the challenge it does just schematically on un unlocking your defense and making you have to play a certain way is always a, a pain um, and then he's got the ability to play in the pocket and beat you that way too so he's getting better each year um, really we all really loved him coming out and um, he's I think one of the main reasons he took him to the playoffs last year and uh, he played really unbelievable there in that second half on Sunday from a preparation standpoint, how tough is it Thursday? Do you just feel really rushed? Yes. Um, it, uh, you feel extremely rushed. Um, you know, I, I saw the players a few hours ago, and it was the first time I saw them. I told them it was Wednesday morning, and um, by our, the end of our first meeting, it was Thursday. It was kind of how we explained it. And tomorrow morning is Friday, um, but by 10 o'clock, it's the day before the game. Um, so it's weird. Um, we were throwing four days into two days. As coach and staff, we throw two days into one day. Um, so it's kind of a uh, loss for words when I can't swear up here. Meanwhile, the Giants opted to stay in Arizona following their game against the Cardinals on Sunday because of their back-to-back -back West Coast games. Here's how the Giants are tackling their short week ahead. Yeah, so it's really walk through slash jog through. Um, you got to, you know, prepare hard in the meetings and you got to, you know, treat those those lighter practices um, with great detail and attention to uh, the specifics of what we need to get accomplished. We're joined now by all pro safety Talanoa Hufunga to help preview Thursday night's home opener. Huff, from year two to year three, what's the biggest change in your game? Oh, biggest change would probably just be um, the opportunity to go out there and learn as much to be a leader. I think. Uh, I think that's what my coaches expect from me. Uh, kind of that year two to year three jump has to be a little bit more maturity as well. Uh, really understanding the game and really expanding that knowledge to people around you as well. So uh, being a leader as much as I can and, and absorbing that uh, information and, and continue to pass it on has probably been the biggest transition. So. Two wins in two weeks now. The defense had to dial up something different in that second half against the Rams. After facing early adversity, what'd you learn about your unit? Uh, you know, we're very tenacious. I think that's a, 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 a key word for us. I think that kind of describes everybody in the room, guys that are willing to fight uh, through adversity then a day. And um, we really wanted the outcome to be what we expected, and that's a win. So uh, for us to really put our foot forward and, and continue to, to do our best in the second half to, to flip the script uh, was something that we really enjoyed. So you mentioned keep on fighting. That's something that cornerback Isaiah Oliver also said in his post-game interview. And he had the momentum-changing play of the game. As soon as it happened, that interception of Matt Stafford, everybody swarmed in celebration. What was your initial reaction? I was geeked up. I was super excited, super ecstatic, uh, really happy for him and his progress that he's made. You know, Zay is a, is a guy that's really uh, come along and really helped our unit out as well. I think one of his more key plays to me was actually his fourth down stop uh, that he blitzed. And I think a lot of guys aren't are meant to make plays like that. But, you know, he had a knack for the ball and he really blitzed and just ended up making a play that he wasn't even in the position to make. And that's what's really cool about seeing a guy like him uh, and the way he approaches the game. He's, he's tenacious, like I said, so. That blitzing is one of the trademarks of defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes, along with scoring on defense. Mm -hmm. That's something he emphasizes. 
How is it that he's conditioning you guys to really have a nose for the ball? Uh, we practice every day. You know, when the ball's on the ground, you got to pick it up. Uh, any ball that's in the air, you try to attack and make it come down with ours. Uh, but at the end of the day, so when the ball is, is live and in play in a game, you, you know, you have your mind on it to get the ball back and, and either give it to the offense. Uh, but like we said, score on D is, is our goal. And we haven't had one yet. Uh, but, you know, they, like, like I said, they come in bunches. So uh, the, the, we'll see them soon. <laughs> you had your second career pick against the Rams in week four of last season. In the same way that that helped build your confidence, what does a play like that do for someone like Isaiah Oliver, who is finding his footing in this defense and establishing himself? Uh, well, he's played a lot of football, so I understand. I think for him, he's going he's gonna to feed off of it and continue to fight uh, every day uh, and just allow himself to build that confidence to go into every game and understand that he's, he's another football player like us that can, that can contribute to this team. Uh, and at, like I think Fred says it the best, if you just do your 111, you know, plays are going to be made for you, but you're going to help other people make plays as well. There's not much time to enjoy that Rams win because you've got the home opener in just a matter of days. What does the breakdown of this week look like for you guys? I think it'll be a great matchup. You know, I think the, the Giants come in with a, with a good, talented roster as well. Uh, guys that are able to work hard and they pulled out a really good win against the Cardinals. And I think for us, just allowing the, ourselves to be, like I said earlier, uh, just kind of, you know, have the standard being the standard. Uh, we want to win uh, at the end of the day. So uh, going against a great team like that will be really fun for a Thursday night matchup. We were talking before the cameras started rolling, but what does the week look like for you in terms of practice and just getting your body right in time for Thursday? Yeah, it's a short week. Uh, it's really weird playing from a Sunday to a Thursday. Uh, you know, you, the key thing is, is making sure your body feels good. So it's a lot of body work, a lot of mental prep. You know, you actually don't practice too much during the week because you got to recover your body as much. Uh, so a lot of walkthroughs, a lot of mental things uh, and allowing yourself to get ready for, to, for the game on Thursday. So wanted to talk about the opponent, and you talked a little bit about the Giants. They've had a slow start offensively, a slow start in general, but what is the biggest threat that they pose to your defense? I think the speed that they got on the outsides. I think they have a really really good quarterback that's mobile, uh, allowing him to, to get out the pocket early on in those games. I think that's what allowed their success as well. Um, for us, it's just eliminating those things, disrupt the quarterback, and, and hopefully we can win our one-on-one -on -one, uh, matchups on the outside and uh, continue to get up. Uh, kind of attack up front. So. Daniel Jones is also known for his deep balls. Mm -hmm. What aspect of your game becomes most important against a quarterback that can make those plays down the field? Uh, having great eyes. I think vision is going to help. It'd be a key. Uh, you know, thank God that we have a great, great coordinator and, and Steve Wilkes and, and great defensive players at the with Gip and Fred and Bosa up front uh, helping us out. So as long as they can help get the pressure up front, I think it will help our job in the back end do a little bit easier. Jones has a couple new offensive weapons this year. You've got tight end Darren Waller, then wide out Jalen Hyatt. Who are you zeroing in on this week? All of them, uh, first and <laughs> foremost. I think that's the, you can never count somebody out. You know, at the end of the day, somebody's going to you know, step up and make plays. Uh, gone against Darren Waller uh, before, and I understand the threat that he builds, the speed that he has as a tight end is unmatched. He's really a receiver, if you really think about it, the way he can run. He's, he's that fast. Um, and a guy like Jalen Hyatt, he's, you, know, you saw his speed in, in the combine as well. So... Uh, very blessed just to have the opportunity to go against these guys and, and very grateful that we get to do this on a Thursday night. Another playmaker that is in question is running back Saquon Barkley. He hasn't been ruled out yet. How does that affect the game planning on the defense's end? Uh, honestly, you know, Saquon is one of the best running backs in the league. We all know that. Uh, at the end of the day, we're going to have to stop the run regardless of the situation, whether he's a running back or if their second string is in. Um, and for us, it's just limiting the run game to make them one-dimensional. And so... Uh, if he plays, it just adds another flair for them as well. But for us, we just got to hone in our details. You're coming off a game at SoFi Stadium that had a sea of red in the stands. Mm -hmm. But it isn't Levi Stadium. What is different about a game day here at home? It's the culture. You know, the Bay Area has its own unique culture. Um, and for us, just the opportunity to play in front of these fans is going to be awesome. Um, and seeing all the red out there is going to be cool. And I think we're wearing our throwbacks as well. So I think that's another aspect that we love about it. So. You talk about culture. It is Latino Heritage Month. You are super proud of your Tongan heritage. How cool is it to see the NFL incorporating representation of different cultures in its activations? I think it's, uh, it's special. I think for us just to allow us to be ourselves and, and show a little bit about you. You know, I think everybody has their culture. I know uh, Fred and the way he uh, shows his uh, Hispanic culture, I think that was pretty cool. Uh, being able to go to Mexico City last year and then allowing himself just to, to really represent it on his field and, and the way he plays. I think for me, being a Polynesian descent, Tongan, um, 
the Tongan heritage and the Tongan community here in the Bay Area has been awesome. And so I think for me to allow myself to really show it on the field and, and have a celebration and, and have other guys do it as well, it's really cool and, and allows us to, to really showcase, you know, our home back uh, wherever you would say. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and one of the celebrations that has become popular on the field are the victory lays. Can you tell us how that came about and just how much you've enjoyed sharing that with the team? Yeah, the victory lays came from one of our team photographers, Kim. Uh, she came up to me and she was like, we used to do this chain thing after games that, you know, you get a victory chain. And so, you know, obviously being a Polynesian set, you know, we have these lays and lays are a good representation of success, uh, warriorship and, and different things. So I think having her give it to me to give to somebody and whoever was the player of the game was one of the coolest things. And I think that was just our tradition uh, as we kept winning last year. So uh, each win, we have a victory lay to give out. Uh, and so hopefully it's usually to the MVP uh, of the game that we think uh, early on. And so- Do you um, decide that? It's kind of a collective decision. I think last last week, uh, you know, I was able to ask John Lynch right after the game. Oh, I saw I him on the that. sideline. I said, who do you think was the best player on the field today? And uh, he said, Christian McCaffrey. And I think that was the reason why we went over there and gave it to him. I did see that picture. It was a great picture. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. And we are going to continue celebrating Latino Heritage Month with a look at our special video made by 49ers Studios. Tú y yo somos Latinos. Nacimos en lugares distintos, de colores, cultura. Y lo hacemos por cultura, no me copien la postura. Tú y yo somos latinos. Aquí estamos en el estadio Azteca y arranca el partido. Orgullosamente 504 HN. De sueños, banderas. Samuel rompe una tacleada, sigue de pie de los años. Touchdown. Porque yo soy un guerrero, vamos a ver quién es el mero mero. Pasiones. Tú y yo somos latinos. Caminamos unidos, gritamos bajo la misma bandera, hablamos el mismo lenguaje. Prescott observa, lanza, intercepción de Olpro, somos un equipo. Somos una Aquí familia. Aquí matamos nosotros. Somos. Nosotros.